rock a by loco on the bench top. Shh, I'm making a work cradle on Ron's trains and things right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more videos about model railroading tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. If you follow Ken Patterson and his monthly What's Neat program on YouTube, then you know that in this month's video he included a segment on how he built a locomotive cradle for working on locomotives and rolling stock without damaging detail parts. Well, his timing was gratuitous for me because it just so happened that I was working on a similar cradle for my workbench just as that video came out. Today I'm going to show you how I built this cradle for working on locomotives and rolling stock on my workbench out of scraps that I had laying around my garage and underneath my workbench. I'll show you how I built this one and how you can build one similar for whatever scale you model in. Before we get started on this, I want to remind you that this coming Friday, November 3rd, I'm going to be releasing a video announcement about the modeling contest that I'm going to be hosting on Ron's Trains and Things. I am very excited about this contest and I know that many of you are going to want to enter. It's going to be a great contest with some really nice prizes, so you're going to want to be sure and watch for that video this Friday, November 3rd, so you can learn all the details, the rules, and how you can enter. Now let's go out to the garage, and I'll show you how I built this locomotive and rolling stock cradle for my workbench. To start my cradle project, I'm out here in the garage because I'm going to be cutting some materials on the table saw. The basis of my cradle is going to be some scrap pieces of foam I have. I have a piece of inch and a half foam and then for the base and the sides I also have a scrap of uh, eighth inch uh, masonite hardboard uh, which I had left over from the fascia and backdrop of my layout. The first thing that I want to do is I want to get a couple of good straight edges on uh, my material and so I've uh, got my saw set at, at 90 degrees I'm going to narrow the cut down to just about half an inch uh, because I literally just want to take off enough here to give me a good straight edge. Now, whenever working with a power saw, a table saw in particular, uh, loose sleeves, not a good idea. It's a little cool out here, uh, but I'll be a lot safer without uh, the sleeves from this jacket. Also, jewelry, which I tend to wear, also not a good idea. So I'm going to take my wedding ring and my bracelets and I'm going to stick those in my pocket. Uh, just to be safe as we're working here. Always want to exercise uh, good safety. I have my earplugs in to protect my ears. Uh, I have my safety glasses here that I can actually will fit over my regular glasses. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, since the, the foam is going to make uh, the, the angled part of my cradle, I, I want to cut this. And I, I've played around with some angles, and the angle that seems to work best for me is if I can have uh, my work propped up at about a 60 degree angle. So I'm going to come in here and set my table saw at 30 degrees. Now I measured uh, the cars and locomotives that I work on in my layout and about the largest cars or, or pieces of rolling stock that I work on are 89 foot auto racks and they're about 7 inches long so I figured if I made my cradle 8 inches long I would have plenty of room to work on anything that, uh, that I need to work on. So I'm going to set my table saw back up to 90 degrees and then I'm going to set my fence to 8 inches. Now I want this to be fairly precise, it doesn't probably matter too much, uh, but one thing I, it's just a matter of habit, learned a long time ago in any kind of woodworking is um, these little tape measures for your fence on your table saw, never trust them because they are not just perfectly accurate. So I'm going to measure 8 inches, I'm going to measure on both sides, 
just to make sure that I've got uh, my fence good and straight. Lock it down, double check it. Okay. Now, in order to make the angle within the cradle 90 degrees, I, I have one uh, piece cut at 60 degrees. I need the other one cut at an opposite 60 degrees. And the only way I can do that will be to stand the piece of material up and run it through the table saw this way so that I get that complementary cut here. And there I have the angle that I need. I'm just going to lay this out to check these to make sure they uh, really are uh, where I need them to be. And that's going to make just the angle that I want. So we'll come back and show this to you uh, a little more closely on the workbench when we get downstairs. Now the next thing I need to do is to cut these pieces to the width that I want them to be. Uh, so in this uh, piece that I just cut that bevel on, because I couldn't cut all the way through, I want to cut this angle off uh, right here uh, so that this is nice and square here. And then I don't need this to be very wide. Uh, so I'm going to cut it off just about at the top of the bevel here, and that should give me uh, just pretty much exactly what I want as far as the amount of uh, foam that I need on that side. Uh, this piece, which will be the piece that actually supports the, uh, the, the uh, rolling stock or locomotive as it lays in the cradle, I, I want to leave about an inch of foam on the top here, so I'm going to set that to where I can cut just about an inch and, uh, and leave that here. I need to cut the base for this cradle out of this piece of, uh, of masonite. I think I said eighth inch a while ago. It's actually quarter inch. I use eighth inch on my backdrop, quarter inch on the fascia, and this is a piece of that. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to cut my base piece. Setting this together, I know that my base piece is eight inches wide this way. Uh, I'm measuring it this way. Uh, it looks like it comes out to be uh, about two and a half. Let's actually call that two and uh, about nine sixteenths. Use my tape to make sure it's accurate on both ends and lock it down. Uh, I'm going to want to cut some sides all the way around this. The ends uh, are going to be two and a half inches long. Of course, these eight inch sides. You know, I've got this quarter inch masonite uh, and I got two widths of it on, on uh, <coughs> for the two ends. So I'm going to want to add a half an inch to those sides <coughs> and make them eight and a half inches long. But then the height, one of my eight and a half inch pieces needs to be um, about two and a quarter inches. And this one over here uh, is going to be, this is an inch, but... Um, I'm going to need to make some room for some foam there. So I'm actually going to raise that up to an inch and about an eighth. Now we're over at the power miter saw to cut all these ends to length. Now that I've got these pieces cut, I'll be able to show you a little better what I have in mind here. I have my base, uh, again, with any kind of hardboard. Uh, you've got a smooth side and a rough side. For the base, I want to put the rough side down just to give it a little more traction so it doesn't slide around so much on the workbench. Uh, these two pieces are going to go on uh, just like this uh, to form. They form, uh, you have a 60 degree angle here that I can work on, uh, but they have a nice 90 degree angle between them here for the work to sit on. 
Um, then I have this piece of uh, just foam rubber. This is just a piece of, of padding that came out of packaging. Uh, this is the type of thing that I always watch for and hold on to when I get it because it's very handy uh, to uh, to put my work on whenever I'm modeling. I like to have some of these and I've got a few around. Uh, and I'm going to line this with this foam rubber. And so what I'm literally going to do is I'm going to set this in here and I'm going to use this as a guide as I mark these end pieces. Now with the ends and the sides I want the smooth side out just because it makes a nicer uh, looking surface. But I'm going to just hold this end up. I'm going to flush it up with each side of the, the bottom. And get um, these pieces into place. I'm going to lay this foam in place. And this is where I wish I had uh, an extra pair of hands. Get the foam in place. And then I'm going to come in with a... Uh, I have a fine tip sharpie, and I'm just going to mark this along the back, right where that foam sits. I'm going to put a piece of foam down here also when we're done, so I need to make another mark right here where this piece of foam sits. And then of course I'm also going to want to trim it down here. Um, so I'll be cutting this off right here, so that all this material and all this material will be gone. And this will be my end. Probably cut these out with a coping saw. Um, I'm going to come in here carefully and uh, cut down through these. Okay, there's that one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the box itself. So I'm going to take my foam pieces out and uh, I'm going to come in with some just regular old Elmer's yellow wood glue. One thing I like to do whenever I'm doing gluing like this with wood glue, this works really well, and that is to put down a piece of wax paper underneath my work because the glue will not stick well to the wax paper whereas it could stick to my to my gluing mat so i'm first going to come in just with a micro brush and i'm going to just start putting some glue along the edges of the base piece here i uh, do not need a large amount i just want to spread a nice full even thin coat along here Okay, with the glue along the edges of the base, remember I want to use the rough surface down on the base just to give it a little bit of grip. And then I'm going to start just putting these pieces in place. Now the back and front go, they're going to hang out on the outside edges. And then on these end pieces, Put a little glue on the edges of them where they will glue into the front and back. Get it in place. And then this front one will go in just like so. Now that I've got it where I want it, I've got a nice heavy rubber band here that I'm going to put around it just to serve as a clamp, hold everything in place. I actually have a couple. I think I'm going to use them both. Put one here at the top, and this one's a little small, but I think it'll go around there. I'll put it down here at the bottom, and with that in place, I'm going to check the plumb on the ends again. Off camera, while the glue was drying, I did take a piece of medium grit sandpaper and just sanded down the, the rough edges uh, where the uh, saw had cut all of these pieces. And now uh, the glue has had several hours to dry. 
So now we're ready to start uh, assembling the uh, the actual cradle itself. I've got my two foam pieces here, and I also have a low temp hot glue gun. Uh, I find that uh, low temp hot glue is a great way to to glue foam. Uh, you do not want to use the high temp uh, hot glue, uh, the ones that have the uh, the large like half inch sticks. Uh, the temperature is too high, and uh, it will melt your extruded foam. But the low temp hot glue will uh, actually glue foam very well without melting it. So we're going to use uh, that to glue the foam into place. And um, I have this little tray here just to set my glue gun over so that if it drips when I'm not using it, it doesn't drip on my cutting mat. So I'm going to actually start by putting the glue into the box itself. That way if it squeezes out and, uh, as uh, I install the foam itself, it'll just go down into the bottom of the tray where you'll never see it. Uh, I'm going to start here on the bottom. This is where the larger piece will go. And I'm just going to put a bead along the bottom there, along the side, then kind of along the upper part of the back, and along this side, a bit more there. And before it sets up, I'm going to get this piece of foam down and into place. I'm going to press it in there firmly. And that is just how that's going to work right there. And then we'll go ahead and do the other piece also. Same way. Get down in the bottom here. Where the glue with this one stick. And it's a little short. Ah, it's going to be enough. Same way here. I'm going to press this piece down so that they meet up kind of in the bottom just like that. Press it back firmly against this so the glue will actually activate and hold it. Now with our extruded foam in place, we're ready to uh, start installing uh, our foam rubber. So uh, first I need to cut this to fit into the cradle. So first I'm going to cut it to width. And I'm just using the, use a nice sharp pair of scissors here. These are Fiskars, which are good for cutting cloth. And uh, this cuts a lot like cloth. So uh, they work really, really well for cutting this foam rubber. All right, I'm going to cut it to length. And then I'm going to take my first piece and set it down in here like this. And I'm going to try to cut this at an angle so that it will come out even uh, with my foam, um, the angle that's on my foam at the top. Uh, so I'm just going to hold it in place and just cut along the top. Hopefully I can keep it far enough down into place that... Um, does what it's supposed to do here. There we go. Now I'm going to clean that up just a little bit where I had um, oh, some kind of stray pieces there that didn't look quite right. But there, that's not that's not too bad. I'll hold it up just a little bit so that it stays even. I got just a little bit low right there. And uh, and then I'm going to I'm going to hot glue this into place uh, just like I did uh, the foam into the cradle. I'll put a bead of hot glue here. I want to make sure I get a really good bead along this top um, because I want it to definitely stay in place there. And then set my foam right into it just like so. And I'm going to press it down into the hot glue there. Okay, now we're going to come and do pretty much the same thing back here in the back except this time I'm going to hold my scissors vertical to cut right along um, right along where this back kind of wall piece is but at an angle just like I did that first piece and uh, I'm try to cut this to fit nice and snug right into place inside of the frame like so now clean up a little of the stuff that didn't cut just right and 
Looks like I got it just a little long up here at the beginning, but I think I can trim that very carefully here, like so. There. To kind of force it into place just a little bit there. And I think that's going to work pretty well. So I think we're ready to I think we're ready to glue that in place as well. Come in here with just a couple of good beads of hot glue, one along the top, one along the bottom. Got my rubber band in the way. Make sure I get uh, a little on the ends there. And then I'm going to just push this right down into place. Just like so. And with that, we have uh, the basics of uh, basis of our cradle pretty well built. We can put a model in here just like so. It'll hold it and uh, holds it up enough that I can that I can work on it. Um, I need to uh, to turn it upside down to put on couplers and trucks. I can I can do that as well. I, I just like the look of the the uh, hardboard. It's got that kind of wood look to it. Uh, so I'm going to come in and just just paint this brown. I mean this this blue foam strip here. I did uh, I was able to mix together some colors to get a paint that's uh, pretty close to the color of the foam, and that might actually be a better choice anyway. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I just use this. This is just some craft paints that I have uh, mixed together here. And I want to get up here right along the edge of this foam first of all. Probably would have been a lot better off if I had painted this before I put the foam in. Could have kind of gotten down underneath that. Um, and we've got this cradle that... Uh, Will be will be a great tool for working on uh, uh, weathering projects. I could cover this with a piece of paper towel and and do some weathering right on it. I can uh, uh, work on a model when I'm waiting it. I can turn it upside down to work on trucks to replace wheel sets to replace or repair couplers. Uh, just a, a great working tool, and uh, you can make one of these for uh, for your own use. And uh, this one, obviously, I made for in scale, but you could easily do the exact same thing for HO. Just make it a little bit larger, make it the length you need. Uh, you know, extend the the foam up a little higher, so that um, it will accommodate the larger models. But uh, this is something you can build for just about any scale, with probably some materials that you have laying around your garage or underneath your bench work. Uh, just some some scrap. Um, wood if you if you had wood and wanted to use wood or some masonite like i had some extruded foam a little bit of foam rubber and you can make a great cradle it'll be a wonderful tool for your workbench as well this cradle is going to work perfectly for me whenever i'm working on locomotives and rolling stock the padding helps to keep delicate details safe and the angle i built into it is perfect for me as i'm doing weathering or working on wheel sets trucks and couplers I know that these are some ideas that you can employ to build a working cradle of your own and custom fit it to what's most comfortable and most useful to you. And like me, you can probably build it out of some scraps that you have laying around the garage or underneath the bench work. I hope you'll give this project a try. And if you do, be sure and leave me a comment in the comment section of this video and let me know how it goes. Maybe you have already built a similar tool. If so, tell me about that in the comments. And of course, I'd be glad to answer any of your questions that you might have. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, be sure and give it a thumbs up down below and share it on your social media, on Facebook model railroad groups or forums that you participate in so that others can benefit from this and other great ideas that I share on this channel. Also, be sure and check out that expanded description down below where you'll see my Amazon pick of the week, an affiliate link to some interesting products that you might really find interesting as well as links to my Patreon page and my PayPal Me account for those who might like to support Ron's Trains and Things. Well, that's all I have for today, but be sure and join me on Friday for that contest announcement, and again next Tuesday for another great modeling segment, and I look forward to seeing you then.
Tim, Lizzie? 